Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. It's Vivi Cameron here for Spellbinders and today I'm going to be using Jane Davenport supplies for very first time and I'm super excited to share with you my findings and a couple of projects I made using some of these supplies. <music> And some of the products you see there are from the latest release and I wanted to share with you also the unboxing of these products so you can see how they come in the package and I was enjoying this from the very beginning. The mermaid brushes are not just beautiful, they are soft and they are amazing to apply some of these coloring tools or watercolors. And I'm loving this way to translate Jane Davenport art into stamps, dies and also glimmer plates. And the first thing I did was trying the supplies and I noticed stay away that the crayons are water-based, of course, it says in the package, but when you apply them directly on the paper and then you apply water, you might get those sketched lines on the paper. And once you apply the crayon like that on the paper, it's not going to be easy to blend those lines or I don't know how to say that in English, but you can see the mark of the crayon on the paper. So I didn't like that and I started trying different things to use the crayons and I found that if I apply a wet brush on the crayon and I drag that pigment from the crayon to the paper, I will get a super intense and beautiful color. So I love that and you can also splatter the paper that way and create different effects using the color sticks. So these color sticks are a kind of gel and the colors layer nicely on top of the other, more than blending together. And when this dry, the color becomes permanent, so it's not going to blend anymore. So it becomes waterproof, and it's the same with the ink of this golden pen. When it dries, it's waterproof, it becomes permanent, and that makes them also a great medium to apply color on a stamped envelopes or to do some hand lettering as well. So I was using their colors from the Silky Skin Color Stick set. It's a set with 12 beautiful colors or skin tones, but of course you can use those colors for anything else. And I was missing colors, so that day after unboxing this uh, Happy Mail from Spell Binders, and I went ahead and I bought Soul Window. It's a set of another 12 color sticks with beautiful aquamarine and blue and green colors that you will see later in this video. Spellbinders also sent me a pack of drama sticks. This is an oily product that you can lay on top of another medium and you can just draw with these sticks or with these pencils. You can also apply color to an image using uh, the pencils as I'm doing there and smooshing that pigment with your fingers. The pigment doesn't blend together. This is a completely different media because they are really opaque and they cannot resist anything you put on top. So if you try to cover them up, for example, with some water-based products, you are going to be able to see them underneath. Maybe if you use acrylic paint or something like that, then you might be able to cover the drama stick. But I didn't even try that. So in my opinion, in this first approach to these tools, is that the drama sticks will add definition, contrast, and they will be great for uh, highlights. And the pastels are just gorgeous. You can apply them on top of any media again and you will see the color popping on top of anything that is underneath. It's just beautiful. I really love them and you will see me using them in this video as well. My second pack of color sticks arrived and then I start doing some stamping. 
the stamped images are really gorgeous and I really think that you don't need to do a lot if you use these stamps for card making. And here I'm experimenting with these colors over a stamped image. I use VersaFine ink to stamp the image several times, also using my stamping platform. And then I'm applying these pigments. And if you see there, the ink doesn't bleed or anything. And the colors doesn't cover completely the black lines of the stamped image. So the pigments of these color sticks could be also translucent if you use them this way. I thought they were super opaque and because I was applying a lot of the product, but if you dilute the product with water, they are translucent actually. So I noticed that if I prime the paper using acrylic paint or gesso, and I apply then the color sticks on top, directly on the paper, and then I use a wet brush, I can just move that pigment like if they were watercolors and they are beautiful. So I also wanted to show you this, although to be honest, I overdid these pieces. So what I did was putting more and more paint up to the point that they were not looking nice anymore and I uglify them completely. I add more hair, a lot of paint, they were looking sad. No, no. So the best thing and the best advice I can give you if you want to try these products for car making is keep it simple. I don't consider myself good at drawing or oil painting or acrylic painting, that stuff. I studied a, a course for four years, oil painting, and all I did was abstracts. So I never learned to do anything realistic because I really never was into that. So when I saw these supplies and I saw some of them might require some drawing, I was like, oh my goodness, this is challenging, but this is going to be a lot of fun. And what I like about these supplies is that they are taking me out of my comfort zone. And these supplies are also giving me the opportunity to learn a new skill. So for today, I decided to leave stamping to a side and I'm going to be using this Glimmer plate. And to use it, you might need the Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System and some foil. So this is the Glimmer plate and I'm going to turn on the machine. And when you turn it on, you will see a red light. It's the only light that you will see on and you will have to wait for the machine to heat up. So when this is heating, I have the time to cut the foil and to get my paper ready to start foiling. This will take about three, five minutes and I like to trim the paper to the size of the plate to avoid over foiling. Then you need to place the foil paper with the Chinese side facing down, the paper you are going to foil, an extra chip of paper just to make more pressure on the sandwich and the cleaner plates. Then you need to press timer, which is this little button there, and wait for this to heat up. Even when the timer is telling you to go or that this is ready, Wait for it to heat up really well. You have to feel the heat touching the plates on top. And then you run this through the machine, just like I did there. And you will get a perfect foiled image, not excess of foil or anything. And as a bonus, I also wanted to show you how this look if you follow the same process on leather. But this time I didn't use foil. so I. Put the leather as if this were paper on and the glimmer plate and when I ran this through the die cutting machine the hot foil system heat and boss that image on the leather so it creates an impression and you can just leave it like that or you can also add colors using acrylic paints so you can also foil leather however how this is not the topic of this video I'm going to keep it for a next time. Okay, I got those beautiful foiled faces on this mixed media paper. And the first thing I'm going to do before applying any color is to prime the paper. I'm going to be using clear gesso and a skin tones acrylic paints by Jane Davenport. And I'm going to apply the paint on the paper like so. And with a slightly wet brush, I'm going to spread the paint over that image. Of 
okay you will notice that when using this brush I'm going to get a bunch of texture on the image and I really don't like that so I'm going to use one of the mermaid brushes and a little bit more of paint to go over that and to apply a second layer of acrylic paint I'm also going to prime the paper using gesso all around the face and in those areas where I'm going to apply different paints and different colors. And I'm also going to start applying pastels. Don't worry about going over the foil with the colors, that's absolutely okay. And I'm going to share this very slow with you at the beginning but to be honest, all I did there was applying purple, pink, brown colors and at the very end I used very light colors like white and that banana color or a yellow color just to soften all the crazy colors I put there to add contrast. And after using the pastels on the image that has been primed with acrylic paint, I'm going to use the color sticks and I'm going to blend them with water to activate that pigment and to be able to spread that easily on the paper. You will see me also applying the color stick pigment over the pastels and that's fine. They will completely cover the pastels as well. but at some stage they also blend a little bit and they create nice effects for the skin. I apply gesso around the face to prime the paper but I can still see the crayon uh, lines there and that's not something I really want. I want the crayon to be able to glide on the paper and that happens when you apply acrylic paint by Jane Davenport but it's not happening with the gesso there maybe I didn't mix the gesso properly or something but then I'm going to fix it I'm going to apply a white acrylic paint I have and perhaps this is going to help me a little bit more with this mission of drawing hair <laughs> and this made me feel a little bit anxious because I don't have idea how to do this but anyway I'm going to try my best and I'm going to overlay colors like purple, pink and browns and I'm just going to try to make it work. Okay, so I have to stop trying to do the hair and now I'm going to add some shadows on the face using this makeup brush and 
some uh, other pastels I have in my stash because I have black and also this skin tone that is going to help me to give her a little bit more of space in the forehead because she was like without forehead at all um, the hairline and her eyebrows were almost together so I'm trying to fix that and I'm also using some of the pastels on her hair to try to add some texture and try to make it work I also applied this pen here on her eyes and I changed my mind and tried to fix it using a white marker. I used a green color for her eyes, but then I decided to change it. So when I was working on this, I also changed my mind several times and it was okay. That's part of things, it's kind of the creative process, but at some point, I feel that it's very important to know when to stop and that was the challenge i faced when i was working with these images i struggled to know when i should stop so i start ugly finding or making them look kind of weird and well that was my experience but i still love these products i think they provide a completely new different look and feel for cars kind of arty and very very nice of course i have to improve my skills to to get this done but here's a good sample of someone who have never touched this and do it for very first time so it's something possible you know from here there is a lot to learn and uh, another thing is i decided also to use uh, from this collection a die set just to create some little flowers to embellish this card and all I did was die cutting a piece of the paper I used uh, at the beginning of the video to try the crayons or the color sticks. And I got some super beautiful die cuts. Those die cuts look just stunning. When these uh, color sticks dry on the paper, they are matte. And this is a super nice finishing touch. So I'm going to put a card together. This is going to be a six by six inches card. And let me show you how you will see the foil shining through the paint. It's very subtle, but it's still there. And I'm going to use this beautiful rustic rose cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey just to add a coordinating backing panel. And I also stamped the envelope using one of the stamps from Life Sparkle stamp set. And I made a couple of extra cards using panels that I also foiled using the glimmer plate. This one here, you can see the foil behind the pastels. And for that one, I didn't apply the paper. So you can see the difference. And to make this one, I follow the same process I just showed you, but you see it's a completely different outcome. And I also use the die cuts to embellish this card. And well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and visit the blog for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.